stay Ohio in the house. I'm in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida. It's an incredible day here. And uh, nice to meet you. If we're just meeting for the first time or if we're meeting again, hello. My name is Ben Azadi. I am the best selling author of four books, including the last book I wrote called Keto Flex. And I'm the founder of Keto Camp. Uh, Keto Camp is my company. That's where I'm located right now, Keto Camp HQ. And our mission is to educate and to inspire 1 billion people. So every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I go live with you to answer as many questions as possible. So let's get this party officially started. Good to see you TikTok. Good to see you Instagram. Good to see you YouTube. Good to see you Twitch and Twitter and Facebook. We got everybody on the house, in the house, and LinkedIn, can't forget you. So here's what I'd love for you to do. Let me know where you're watching from if you haven't done that. And then number two, start sending your questions my way. I'm going to do my best to answer as many questions as possible in the next 45 minutes or so. We'll have Alina from the Keto Camp team helping out with links and resources of things that I mentioned. She'll do her best to put them in the live stream chat. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So Nina, are you in Denver? Um, you're not living now in Denver, right? You're still in Miami, aren't you? Uh, Rita, good to see you. David in the UK. Julie in Texas. I see South Africa. I see Detroit. I see many of your beautiful faces. Uh, Monica, good to see you in the Bahamas. I just saw Monica a few days ago here in Miami at the Biohacking Congress. What a pleasure to meet you and your sister. Uh, hey, Roberta. Hey, Oli. Hey, Bibiana. Bib Bibiana. And um, Coach Becky in the house from Keto Camp. Hey, Becky, thank you for the link to the book. Okay, let's get into your questions. What questions do you have for me? I know a few came in, but I kind of missed them. Uh, so if you could copy and paste them as well, that'll be great. The Valley 602 says, I am fasting 8 p.m. at night to 12 p.m. at noon the next day. Am I doing this right, drinking only water? Yeah, it's a great schedule. Um, I would ask you this. If you're, you're finished eating by 8 p.m., what time are you going to bed? Because uh, you want to give yourself at least three hours of a buffer of fasting before bed. So if you are going to bed like at 10 p.m. but eating at 8, you might want to take that meal earlier, uh, meaning like 7 p.m. or earlier. But that is a, a good substantial fast. Uh, make sure you're getting enough protein during your eating window. Uh, make sure you're, you're also following the fasting versus feasting cycle. So you got to hit the feasting part. But I like that schedule. Now, with that being said, I think you would benefit and more people would benefit if they kind of switched up their schedule, their intermittent fasting schedule. A lot of research has come out over the years that shows and I don't like this research because it goes against what I like to do with my schedule. But this is what the research shows that it's better to actually eat breakfast and skip dinner versus the other way around. I mean, how many of you are, are breakfast skippers like myself? Um, and in reality, breakfast is whenever you break the fast. But what I'm saying when I say breakfast, I mean a morning meal. I typically love to skip the morning meal and continue fasting because I feel so great. But research is showing you should actually have a big, healthy, protein, fat, fiber breakfast and then a good lunch and, and finish eating by 2 or 3 p.m. And you skip dinner. Um, it could be the same time in terms of you're still fasting for the same 16 or 18 hours, but you're switching things up. If you're in the habit of eating lunch and dinner, which I am, it's going to suit you better. I imagine you'll feel results almost immediately when you switch it up to having uh, a morning meal, a lunch, and then you skip dinner. So if you do try that out, I'd love to hear your feedback. We've done a challenge with the Keto Camp Academy students last month in, in September where I challenged them to have breakfast and, and have an eating window of 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And a lot of the feedback was great. Even for myself, on the days that I was consistent with that, I track my sleep. I track my heart rate variability, my resting heart rate. Everything improved. I got more deep sleep, more REM sleep. My HRV increased. My resting heart rate decreased. My body temperature decreased. Everything improved. And I felt better. And the research shows you can get more autophagy and more anti-aging when you eat a big breakfast and skip dinner. So that's a long answer to me trying to inspire you to eat breakfast and skip dinner. Motivation words for people trying to leave addiction and focus on family and stay healthy. That is a deep question, Chong Wick baby. Um, I'm not an addiction expert. 
So I'm just going to share my experience with addiction, but I'm going to read the question again because I think it's important for everybody to hear what the question was. And you might know somebody who's dealing with addiction or maybe you are dealing with addiction, but here's what Chong Wick Baby said. Motivation, can you share motivational words for people trying to leave addiction and focus on family and stay healthy? All right, I have a controversial view on addiction. Again, I'm not an addiction expert, but here's my controversial view on addiction. Addiction, having an addiction is a superpower, okay? Why do I say that? Because there's a lot of energy that you put into your addiction, right? I'll give you an example. When I, when I had my, my addiction, and I've always been called, uh, I have an ad- addictive personality, I was addicted to drugs uh, when I was in high school and in college. I was addicted to video games. I was addicted to sugar and carbohydrates. But you know what? I, I, I spent a lot of energy on those addictions. To give you an example, video games. I was one of the top video game players in the entire world in my early 20s, okay? I was one of the top Madden football players in the world. I was one of the top Call of Duty video game players in the world. And I'm not saying that like, like I really was. I, I went to the Final Four in the Madden Challenge. I was ranked uh, 142 out of millions of players in Call of Duty. And I say that because those were my, I used that superpower for bad behaviors. I used the energy and addiction for sugar, video games, drugs, carbohydrates. But everything changed for me when I started to become clear on my highest values meaning what's important to me? What do I want to do on planet Earth? My highest values. The Greeks call it your telos, right? Your, your highest values. And that, that, that's unique to you. Um, so for me, I lost all my weight. Um, I became fit. And I started to really become infatuated and obsessed with health and nutrition and fitness and exercise. So what I did is I transferred the energy in my addictive behaviors towards bad behaviors. And I harnessed that energy and channeled it into studying, uh, content creation, and all the things I'm doing today. And, And it's a superpower for me now because I'm able to like focus and get things done and be creative. And I'm using all this energy that I was using on bad, um, behaviors and, and bad habits that were you know, addictive personalities. And now I'm using it for good. And it's a superpower when you when you could channel that energy because there's a lot of energy in addiction. So again, I am not an expert on addiction, but I have struggled in the past tremendously with addiction. So that's the way I see it. If you have an addiction right now, it's because you might be filling a void or not clear on what's important to you. And it's actually a blessing to have that addiction because think about the amazing power you have in that. And here's the truth. I hear so many people say, I'm just not disciplined enough to eat healthy. I'm just not disciplined enough to do X, Y, Z. Here's the truth. Every single human being is disciplined. Nobody lacks discipline, okay? You were disciplined to play video games every single day, or I was. I was disciplined to eat sugar every single day. I was disciplined to put on my shoes every single day. I was disciplined to drive to work every single day. So we're all disciplined in different areas, but where can you transfer that discipline? That's where the magic happens. And I saw your comment, Matt and Jilly and Becky. Thank you. So I hope that helps. Uh, Again, if you want a, a great book to learn more about how to discover your highest values, I highly recommend... Dr. John Demartini's book called The Highest Values. I have it here somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Look at that. I activated the RAS and I saw it out of all the books. This is the book right here. It's called um, The Values Factor. Uh, I've actually interviewed Dr. John Demartini on my Keto Camp podcast twice this year. And those were two of my favorite all-time interviews on the Keto Camp podcast out of the almost 500 episodes I've done. So go listen to the interviews I've done with Dr. John Demartini on my Keto Camp podcast and Keto Camp YouTube channel and get this book. It's, it's thick, but I'm telling you, 
like I'm going to open it up to a random highlighted section right here. Let's see what it says. To truly experience gratitude for life's balance, we would be wise to embrace both the seemingly painful challenges and the seemingly joyous support. Both are part of life, and true wisdom lies in finding fulfillment and inspiration in both, right? So what does he mean by that? He follows the universal law of polarity. How many of you know the universal law of polarity? I'll explain it real quick. And by the way, universal laws, there's no arguing universal laws. Like gravity is a universal law. I don't believe in gravity. Well, what happens when somebody jumps off a building? Whether you believe in gravity or gravity or not, you see that it exists. So you, all universal laws exist. The law of polarity is a universal law. This means for every up, there's a down. Left, right. Black, white. There's an opposite to everything. Nothing is, oh, well, I should say that. Whatever is good is bad. Whatever is bad is good. There's always something equal. It's just that we're not aware of the good happening when bad things happen or vice versa, the bad happening when something good happens. So he follows the law of polarity. So that's what he means by that. To truly experience gratitude for life's balance, right? Good and bad, left, right, up, down, etc. We would be wise to embrace both the seemingly painful challenges. So the things we're challenged with, the struggles, and the seemingly, the seemingly joyous support. So the happy moments, the challenging moments, but embracing both and being thankful for both, right? I'm gonna, you want me to read another passage to you and just find a random highlight? I could do that if you are enjoying this and then I'll get to some more questions. Okay, another thing that I, and this is, you know, these are things that I highlighted when I read this book like seven, six or seven years ago. So it's cool to kind of go back, but I'll read another thing for you here another passage from the book. Okay. So he says, rather than being driven by passion, truly fulfilled human beings will follow their mission inspired by their highest values and most integrated being. Just as your values are completely individual and unique to you, so is your mission, the expression of your own unique contribu contribution to the world. Discovering this mission, the contribution that only you can make is the key to a life that can be meaningful beyond your wildest dreams. Mm. So good. Mm -mm -mm. Your highest values are unique to you. All right. It could be being the best mother in the world, the best soccer coach, the best health educator. That's one of the things I aspire to be. Uh, it's unique to you. Nobody else. So once you are clear on what's important to you, then you can work towards that and, and you become unstoppable. So go get the book. Go listen to the podcast. He was, he is amazing. Anna, you're enjoying those passages? I hope y'all are enjoying that. Keto Camp Mission. That's right, Becky. Educate and inspire. I'm going to answer some more questions here. Leah says, how to heal and clear my body from mold toxicity? That is a... Um, a long process to do. I, I personally had mold toxicity. First of all, you want to make sure that the mold is already gone. So the, the, the cause, the exposure is gone. So if you got it from your house, make sure you completely remediate the place or moved out because you want to make sure it's gone from your environment. Number two, um, it's an extensive process, but it can be done. It typically it takes 12 to 16 weeks to get the mycotoxins out of your body. Um, if you want to email me, Leah, uh, we could talk about a protocol for you. We could set up a Zoom consultation and we could talk about a protocol. So Leah, email my team, uh, Alina, over at support at ketocamp.com and we could explore options for you. Danielle Smith just downloaded the book on Audible. You are an action taker. Good job. I'm glad I inspired you to get the book. Nina, I didn't know you moved permanently. It's so funny because everybody's moving to Miami and you moved away. <laughs> ah, well, enjoy it there. I'm actually going to be in Denver at uh, Low Carb Denver in February of 2023. Hey, Katie, I'm glad you loved it. What is a good shower attachment to go help 
Yeah, yeah, good question. So I'll pull up one here on let's see shower filter. Let me share my screen with you, Katie. I know you're watching on I think Facebook. Let's see. You know, Aqua Bliss is fine. This one is fine. I've used this one in the past. The only thing is that you got to make sure you um, replace the filter every three to six months, depending on how often you shower. So it's called Aqua Bliss High Output High Output Re Revitalizing Shower Filter. It's thirty five bucks, uh, but this one's fine. That's the one I would recommend. You thought I was ludicrous? The rapper? Ludicrous, the rapper, me. That's the first time I've heard that. I've heard Macklemore, but uh, that's a first. Okay, I'm now down 128 pounds, my goal weight. Let's go, Debbie. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. That is awesome. Yeah, sometimes comments come in and they're interesting, aren't they? Uh, wear blue blockers, not wear the Bible too. We were created for a purpose. God bless you, Ben. Amen, Betty. Ben, why do you wear blue blockers during a day? Why don't you wear, why um, don't you want blue block? Yeah, these are daylight blue, like these are daylight blue blocking, blue light blocking glasses. That is a mouthful. These are daylight blue light blocking glasses. And then at night I wear the nighttime. So these are formulated. The yellow tint is blocking out and fil I shouldn't say blocking out. It's filtering the junk light from the computer screen, the lights I have here. Uh, but if I go outside, I'm not wearing these. I'm taking them off and getting the sunshine. But with artificial light, what happens is your brain has to filter out everything. And there's so much artificial light everywhere. And if you're letting, if your brain is spending energy and bandwidth on filtering out the junk light, then it is not using that energy and bandwidth on something else. So I want to be focused. I want to be creative. I want to be on top of my game. So I put these on to give my brain a break. It's kind of like having, have you ever opened up a, a browser? Let's say it's a, a, a Google Chrome browser or whatever you use, Firefox, Safari, and you end up, and I'm, I always do this, you end up having ha, opening up over time like 120 tabs, right? Because you're like, I can't lose that tab. I'm going to forget about it. I'm going to revisit it one day. I got to keep it there as a reminder so I don't forget. I do that all the time. And what happens when you have so many tabs open on your web browser? Your computer runs slowly. You have all these things in the background it's dealing with versus the things you want to deal with at the present moment. But then what happens? You're like, all right, screw it. I'm going to close out all these tabs because they're slowing things down. I'm never going to revisit those tabs anyways. And you close it out. Your computer, boom, automatically is functioning and firing on all cylinders. Kind of like what your brain does when you put these blue light blocking glasses on. You're closing all these tabs so your brain doesn't have to worry about it. At nighttime, I put on the red uh, tinted glasses, which is more for nighttime. So I hope that makes sense. I always have so many tabs open. My computer constantly shuts down. Yeah, Alina. Uh, I know you can feel me on that one. These are true dark. I don't have an affiliate with them. I should because I keep recommending them. But uh, my friend Dave Asprey told me to get these and I listened to him. So uh, truedark.com or they're on Amazon too. I have no coupon code or affiliation. But they make a good product. I'm looking on Instagram. Don't mind hearing you rap, Ben. <laughs> I don't rap. <laughs> Richard, good to see you, my friend. Richard is like on every stream. I love it, man. Yeah, you know, Michael, that's a tough question to answer, right? The name of the game is to reduce inflammation. And um, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to read your question here because it's a little controversial, but I read it, Michael. Michael Lauren Photography. I'd recommend a couple of things. Here's what I use for that. Uh, not that I am, but I know people around me that are, and that could affect me if that makes sense. I'm not going to get specific with what I mean there. I take pine needle extract from Ascent Nutrition. I do have a code with them, which is Keto Camp. And I use, so pine needle extract from Ascent Nutrition, which helps with spike protein. 
And then oh, that kind of gave it away. And then I, I use also um, Regenamin by Remedy Link. Regenamin by Remedy Link, which is ant extract. What? <laughs> but it actually protects your DNA. It's like firewall for your DNA. Um, you can find that over at ketocampsupplements.com. Good to see you, Cornelia. Is the goal of fasting to get ketones? That's not the goal, but that is a, a, another bonus of it. Uh, fasting kind of checks the box on a lot of health benefits, fixes the gut, um, helps with this process called autophagy and apoptosis and stem cell production, depending on how long you fast. Uh, increases BDNF in the brain, which is this brain fertilizer. Uh, helps you lower insulin, which is very important for a lot of people who are metabolically um, challenged. So yes, anyways, ketones are the bonus. I do have a lot of recommendation, recommendations for high blood pressure. It's funny, Barry, because I'm going to make, I'm about to record a new video on high blood pressure. I already have one on my YouTube channel, but I'm going to update it. But I'll give you some coaching right now, right? And of course, this is not medical advice, but here's the deal. The num who knows? Let me ask you this question, Barry, and everybody else on here. There's, there could be many reasons why somebody has high blood pressure, but what is the most common reason, the number one reason, I would say, to why somebody has high blood pressure? What do you think it is? As you answer that, I'm going to get some water. I use those supplements cyclically, but especially if I've been exposed. Smoking is, is a good guess. Um, it's not that. Genetics, nope, it's not genetics. Genetics play a very small, small role with um, high blood pressure. Yeah, Susanna, you, you named it. Insulin resistance. Insulin, high insulin levels is the number one cause of high blood pressure. So the first thing to do is to eat. Uh, good job, Armanda. I saw your comment too. The first thing to do is eat an insulin-friendly diet, Okay. What does that mean? That means less carbohydrates, more healthy fat and protein, and eat less fre frequently. So that's where intermittent fasting comes into play. Like ketosis keto like could work so well for lowering insulin and getting people to lower their blood pressure. We've had students in our Keto Camp Academy come in on high blood pressure medication, and sometimes within 28 days, they're off of their medication sometimes a little longer, but as we drop insulin and do things, um, man, it makes a big difference. Now, something else to consider when it comes to high blood pressure is nitric oxide, which is a very important molecule. I have a new podcast coming out soon all about that, but you want to find ways to increase nitric oxide because as nitric oxide goes up, your blood pressure goes down. So how do you increase nitric oxide? A couple of easy ways, N nostril breathing. So not mouth breathing, that's going to raise, um, excuse me, that's going to lower nitric oxide when you're breathing through your mouth. Breathe through your nose. I mouth tape at night to make sure I breathe through my nose. It raises nitric oxide. So nostril breathing, number one. Slow breathing, number two. Just in general, slow breathing. Not necessarily deep breathing, but slow breathing, like three to five seconds in, three to five seconds out. And then uh, green leafy vegetables like uh, arugula and dandelion greens and different cruciferous vegetables. Beets can also help nitric oxide production, but beets are loaded with oxalate, so it's kind of like a trade-off. And then supplementation uh, with, you know, I love the company, um, the product called NO2U. It's a, it's a lozenges, and you put it in your mouth, let it dissolve, and it raises nitric oxide and lowers blood pressure. You could get that over at no2u.com. Our, our coupon code with them is Keto Camp. It's literally N-O, like the letters N-O, the number two, and then the, the letter U, no2u.com. Uh, but that is going to come out soon. If you want my help with lowering your um, blood pressure and getting off your meds, if you're off meds, if you're on meds, then um, email, uh, not email me, but direct message me on Instagram with the word energy and I'll share some info on our Keto Camp Academy program. Same thing with insulin resistance, what I just explained, keto and fasting and quality sleep. And yeah, we, we teach that in our academy. So if anybody wants to learn and get my coaching and coaching from Becky and Alina and John, who are the Keto Camp coaches, just eat, um, direct message me on Instagram with the word energy. 
One more thing uh, before I get to some more questions here. We, we recently wrapped up an incredible seven-day keto challenge. How many of you were on that challenge? Uh, it was freaking awesome. Uh, we had thousands of people from all across the world, and it was a seven-day masterclass. It's over. Uh, we received a lot of emails saying, where can I purchase the video recordings? And we have an answer for you. We decided to put everything, all the recordings together and hire somebody to create professional notes. Rita, awesome. Elizabeth, awesome. And they're available for you. So all you need to do is go to, what's the website? KetoChallengeRecordings.com. Let me share with you what you're going to get. This price is only available for the next seven days, actually the next five days. It's going up after five days, but here is the, when you go to ketochallengerecordings.com, it goes to this website. You can watch this quick video, but uh, you get lifetime access to the recordings plus the professional notes for just one payment of 97 bucks. Um, you can see we had these guest speakers, Dr. Uh, Rebecca Warren, Cynthia Thurlow, Dr. Kate Shanahan, and myself. But uh, let me share with you the sessions. So session one was all about how to start keto or break a keto stall. Session two was all about how to know you're doing keto right, the three methods to test ketones, um, blood markers to get, et cetera. Session three was with New York Times bestselling author, uh, Dr. Kay Shanahan, who was the nutritionist for Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant with the Lakers. Uh, then we had uh, Dr. Rebecca Warren all about thyroid health. We had our Keto Camp Academy students share and the Keto Camp coaches share on session five. We had Cynthia Thurlow on session six, all about keto and fasting for women. And then on session seven, it was the art of keto flexing, where I went over the way to do keto and fasting for long term. And then a bonus session. So all of that is available right now with detailed notes. If you go to ketosismasterclass.com, you'll click to this page, you'll click this button, and then you will check out. So hopefully you could get that before the price goes up in five days. Awesome, and thank you. Well, Betty, the good news is that the challenge recordings are not on Facebook. They're on a web browser. So um, if you were not on Facebook, you could still join that. Awesome, Barry. Come to my IG. I'll see you on the IG. What's the best way to fast? Best way to fast is to first start with keto, 14 days of keto. And then the first step could be, okay, three hours of fasting before bed, three hours of fasting after waking up. So if you go to bed at 11 p.m., finish eating by 8 p.m., go to bed, use that as your fasting window. Let's say you wake up at 6 a.m., wait until 9 a.m., which is three hours after you wake up to break your fast. That would be what is that? 14 hour fast. Uh, I think if I'm doing the, the math correctly. So let's say 8 PM to 8 AM is 12. Oh, uh, no, no, that's going to be a 13 hour fast. So that's still pretty good. And then you could build it up from there. Is it okay to fast from 10 PM to 12 PM and then eat one main meal at 12 and then another meal and protein shake at 7 PM after a workout that works, Jay, that works. Um, so if you're going to, if your last meal is at 7 and then you're fasting until 12 p.m. the next day, you're giving yourself at least three hours of fasting before bed. Yeah, that seems to work. But just make sure you're hitting your protein requirement uh, during your eating window. Ben, what exactly is going on for a diabetic who has too low of insulin and needs to raise it? I'm trying to find a friend. I'm trying to help a friend with keto info and sharing your work. They don't need to increase insulin. Yeah, that sounds like they are potentially getting towards type one diabetes. Okay. Sometimes type two diabetes, if it lingers long enough, could turn into type one diabetes. So I would, I would suggest this, your friend should go get a couple of blood tests done. Number one, a fasting insulin. And then number two, um, a C peptide. This, the fasting insulin you want to be, you know, one to five would be a good range or two to five. The C-peptide, what that's looking at is the beta cells of the pancreas, which is what produces insulin. If you see that, 
really low, like almost at zero, then that's a sign that they're probably getting towards type one diabetes. Typically in the beginning of insulin resistance, you see that very high and then the pancreas kind of burns out and then it drops. So get those two tests done. Uh, I'm not sure if they have type one diabetes, if we're turning into that sometimes an autoimmune disease could the, uh, the, um, immune system could attack the beta cells and then it turns into autoimmune disease. So I would get those two tests done. And if she wants to book a consultation with me, um, or he or she, I'm not sure if it's a guy or a gal, but they could book a consult with me. And anybody can book a consult with me over at uh, speakwithben.com. Yeah, um, how do I bring down my insulin? I I'm not sure what your schedule is in terms of like how frequently you eat, but definitely eating less frequently, having uh, maybe two or three main meals, nothing in between, no snacks, eating mostly protein and fat, lowering your carbs could help tremendously. Um, getting quality sleep can help tremendously. Practicing intermittent fasting and different fasting strategies like 72 hours of fasting, 48 hours of fasting. So there's different ways to do that. Um, my channel, by the way, Harpreet, I have a whole bunch of videos. And if you want my coaching, just direct message me on Instagram with the word energy. What is your protein amount suggestion? Um, for most people, it's going to be one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. Meaning if your ideal body weight, your goal weight is 120 pounds, then you want to consume 120 grams of protein most days. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad that helps. Anna. Is it possible? Nicole, hi. So is it possible that too much protein without added fat is keeping me from achieving ketosis? I've cut carbs way back, but I'm consistently 0.3. It is possible. It's not common, but it is possible. So what you can do, Nicole, is experiment with increasing, keeping everything the same, but just increase your fat and see what happens. Uh, and if nothing happens, then decrease your protein and then see what happens. But uh, you could also take things like L-carnitine, which has been shown to help with ketones. You could also take C8 MCT oil and caffeine also could help with ketone production. So a few things you can do there. We, we kind of troubleshoot that for the Academy members as well. I always have had a problem hitting my protein level, says Julie. I'm doing great keeping carbs at or lower than 20 grams on a daily basis but I just don't eat a lot to get as much protein regularly, regularly. And my weight isn't dropping regularly. And I'm, I'm, I'm only about a pound a week, um, every other week. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. You're not doing anything wrong. And if you just, if you're, if you continue to focus on the scale, you're going to continue to think that you're doing something wrong. I got news for you, Julie. I got news for all of you. The scale is a freaking liar. Don't listen to it. Don't pay attention to it. Ignore that damn scale because it's just going to frustrate you. Give it a good seven weeks, then step on the scale. But in those seven weeks, pay attention to other more important metrics. Get your body fat done. Do you have more energy? Are your clothes fitting better? Take measurements, take photos. And then eventually as you get healthy, the, the weight comes off. But don't focus on the scale. And then in terms of protein, the goal is to hit that requirement that I mentioned. You don't have to hit it every day. If you're having a hard time hitting it, then you could incorporate like high quality protein shakes and protein bars. You could incorporate like uh, perfect aminos to fill in those nutritional gaps or those amino gaps. So a few things you can do there, um, Julie, and, and you know we'll work with you on that as well. Buffy says, "Look at yourself in the mirror. Don't get on the scale. You'll notice the difference." Good job, Buffy. That's good. That's good uh, advice right there. Yeah, vitamin C and potassium on keto carnivore. Well, if you're eating avocado, avocados have twice the amount of potassium than bananas, so you get that. Um, green leafy vegetables have potassium. If you're doing carnivore, you could get all of that from supplementation and organ meats. Have Organ meats are more nutritionally dense than any fruit and vegetable. So it uh, depends on if you're doing organ meat or muscle meat. If you're doing muscle meat, then you want to supplement. If you're doing organ meat, you should be hitting your requirements. Yeah, Ada, that's hard to, to say. I, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, and it also depends on if your neighbor is on medication. She needs to work with the coach. Um, it's hard to come work with us in our academy. 
I would, I would first, you know, have the person become fat adapted, producing ketones and then slowly incorporate fasting. But it's hard for me to just say yes or no on that question. Elizabeth says, yes, do not listen to the scale. How you feel is better. Right on, Elizabeth. I see your consistency in the academy. Good job. How many spoons of MCT oil is recommended? Can you overdo it? You can overdo it because it'll lead to uh, upset stomach and potentially diarrhea. I would say one tablespoon is a good number to hit. Does eating one bite of meat kick you out of fasting? Yes, it does, Jay. Are sardines good to take? Yes. Sardines that have like olive oil or water, no vegetable oils are so good for you. It's a superfood. I just don't like sardines. So I can't stomach them really. But yes, they're good for you. If I'm on OMAD, can I take a one-a-day vitamin to help out? You can take supplements on OMAD. I don't like one-a-day vitamin brand though. Yes, you can, but I don't like that brand. It's synthetic-based. I'm going to answer a couple more questions, and then we're going to wrap up this call. Julie says, I'm feeling much better. Energy could be better, but down 20 pounds since mid-July. Let's go, Julie. Keep doing your thing. You got this. You got this. MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride. And there's different C8, C6, C10, C12. Uh, it's a fat. It's a medium chain fat. The unique thing about MCT fats versus like a long chain fat or a short chain fat, the unique thing about MCT fats and MCT oil, uh, it doesn't require, it, it bypasses digestion, meaning it doesn't require stomach acid to break it down. It doesn't require bile production from the liver to break it down. It goes right into your mitochondria for energy production. So I typically put it in my coffee. C8 is what I use. Caprylic acid is the specific name for that. Brain fog is linked to insulin resistance. Yes, it is. As you get fat adapted, keto adapted, and, and reverse that, you'll notice a big difference with brain fog. The link to get the seven-day keto challenge recordings Lifetime access to the recordings is over at ketochallengerecordings.com. For those asking, ketochallengerecordings.com. Hey, good to see you, Arlene. Love right back to you from Miami as well. Your question is, thoughts on beef protein powder like Equip Foods? I've never heard of that. Beef protein powder. Equip Foods. Let me share my screen on YouTube and Facebook. All right, let's look this up. So it's equipfoods.com. They have prime protein, grass-fed beef isolate powder. Grass-fed beef, protein, coconut cream, stevia. Grass-fed beef, cocoa, cacao powder, stevia, sea salt. Yeah, I mean, it looks good, but but here's the thing. There, I got to see if it's 100% grass-fed. So when you're looking at products that, that that's grass-fed beef, it needs to say either 100% grass-fed or grass-fed and grass-finished because they could get away, these companies, and I'm not saying this company is doing that. I'll, I'll investigate further, but companies could get away with saying it's grass-fed just because the cows maybe for a period of time during their life ate some grass, but they finished them off on grains and corn and soy and GMO crap. So it needs to say 100% grass-fed or grass-fed and grass-finished, okay? Keep that in mind when you're buying grass-fed beef. Now, this company that I'm looking at here, I don't see it say either, um, which is a concern. So what I would recommend is emailing them. Oh, but I know this gentleman. This is my friend, Anthony. So I, I think that's, it looks like Anthony. Let me, yeah, it is Anthony. Um, so it is his product. Anthony's actually my friend. I'm going to, you know, you could reach out to them, but I'm going to personally ask Anthony, hey, is your product grass-fed and grass-finished? Let's see. Learn. Let's go to learn. I don't see it. Let me go back for a second. Hey, good to see Rachel. I'll see you soon for our podcast. I can't wait. Rachel Varga, see you on my Keto Camp podcast in a couple of hours. 
Yeah, I don't see it say grass fed and grass finish. I do know Anthony. He's a good dude. And I think he would have made sure it said that. But what I would do is I would just email them. I would go to the, you know, the bar here, um, go to help and then say, um, put your name or whatever. Just email them. Say, hey, are your products grass fed and grass finished or 100% grass fed? So that's what I would do. And if it is, then it's okay. But here's the deal. Protein shakes are okay, but they're, it's a supplement to supplement eating real meat, eating real food. That's always going to be better. Uh, with that being said, one or two times a week, I'll have a protein shake, but not every single day. Don't rely on protein shakes every single day. Uh, it's to supplement eating whole food. But sometimes you're in a bind. Sometimes you got to get something quick and you want to get your protein. And then that's a good option for protein shake. So that's typically when I do it. I'm going to answer one more question and then I'm going to sign off because I'm going to interview Rachel soon and I got some other things to do. Uh, would you recommend a coffee enema every single day? No, I will. I would not um, recommend that every single day. It's going to be too depleting of minerals. Um, I do love a coffee enema, but not every single day. So two or three times a week would be great. You just got to remineralize because you're going to lose a lot of these minerals and electrolytes. So um, good question, but not every day. A couple times a week would be much, much better. All right. Hey, if you missed the live stream, join me next Wednesday, same time, same place right here on all these channels. I go live every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. In the meantime, go subscribe to our Keto Camp podcast. Camp with the K. We release three episodes every week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Keto Camp on YouTube, Camp with the K. And if you want to learn more about my Keto Camp Academy and, and potentially get health coaching from me, all you need to do is to um, message me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at the Benazadi. Message me on Instagram with the word energy, and we'll get some info to you about that. Arlene, thank you for the badge. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Instagram badge. All right. Thank you all. Have an amazing rest of your day. Vitamin G for all of you. Parmesan cheese is fine in moderation. And 